Good morning. The Subcommittee on Commerce, Justice, Science, and Related Agencies of the Appropriations, Senate Appropriations Committee will come to order. Um, Senator Moran is on his way, we think. So um, in the interest of trying to keep the hearing on time, I wanted to go ahead and begin. Um, just for the record, we will no longer um, take people asking questions in virtual format, so people will be here in person, and we will take people in order of arrival for questions. This is really a pivotal moment for the prosperity and security of the United States and democracies around the world. At the Defense Appropriations Subcommittee, which is also meeting right now, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin and Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff Mark Milley are discussing resources needed to meet the military challenges from Russia, China, and others around the world. But the agencies that are represented here, that each of you represent, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, and the National Science Foundation, NSF, are also key to standing up to the challenges facing our country. So it gives me great pleasure this morning to welcome NASA Administrator Bill Nelson and NSF Director. I'm going to call you Dr. Ponch for ease of um, statement. So thank you both for being here this morning. It's really good to see you again, and I'm delighted that our ranking member has joined us. Um, just to clarify again for the record, we have about four hearings going on in the Senate this morning, so um, we are not sure who will be able to attend, but Senator Moran and I, I know, have lots of questions, so we will be able to cover um, so many issues that are going to be important as we look at the appropriations process. The programs that each of you manage are on the front lines of bolstering the nation's cybersecurity, training teachers, technicians, explorers, and entrepreneurs, developing industries of the future, and understanding the existential threat of climate change. This subcommittee wants the next pair of boots on the moon, the next Nobel Prize winning discovery, and the next paradigm changing technology company to be made in the USA. Or from my perspective, better yet the Granite State, I'm sure Senator Moran feels that way about his home state of Kansas. We know in New Hampshire that manufacturers have what it takes to cut it in space. We have local companies like Microlar, a contractor for NASA, who is a continued contributor of technology and supplies to NASA programs. But we can't take our continued leadership for granted. Our global competitors, including China, especially China, are investing heavily in scientific and technological innovation. And if we want to sustain our scientific leadership and the economic prosperity and national security that it affords, we have to continue to keep peace. When the U.S. government was shut down in 2019 due to partisan bickering, a disagreement in the Senate over the budget, China was landing on the dark side of the moon. We're not going to be able to compete if that's the choice that we have. Now, I don't want to focus on the past, but we need to learn from it so that we don't repeat it. Most critical, it's a reminder of what's at stake in this global competition. That's why I'm pleased that the fiscal year 2022 omnibus provided the largest increase to NSF in more than a decade and a $770 million increase for NASA. I'm also pleased that Congress is currently in the midst of a bipartisan conference on significant legislation to advance the mission of both these agencies, the U.S. Innovation and Competition Act, which is the name of the Senate version of the bill. President Biden's fiscal year 2023 budget for NASA and NSF build on this pro progress and keep the nation moving in the right direction. For NASA, the FY 2023 request is nearly $26 billion, an increase of $1.9 billion, or 8%, above the FY22 enacted level. The President's request includes $10.5 billion for NSF. This is an increase of $1.65 billion, or 19%, above the FY22 enacted level. There's a lot to like in these requests. I'm sure that each of you 
would have liked more, but I think this is um, an increase that can be put to good use, and I know that both agencies plan to expand climate research. NASA is asking for $2.4 billion in Earth science research and more than $500 million to lessen the impact of aviation on the climate. NSF's budget includes a total of $1.55 billion for climate and clean energy research as we work to enhance our energy security and create energy efficiency and renewable energy, no energy jobs. Most important, the request invests in people. With $150 million for STEM engagement at NASA, and $1.4 billion for NSF's renamed Directorate for STEM Education. And this is a major priority for me because I've seen how critical it is to our economy in New Hampshire and to the economy in the country. I was just at a uh, ribbon cutting yesterday for BAE Systems, which, which makes um, uh, critical parts for the F-35 and um, a lot of our war fighting equipment. And they're hoping to hire several hundred more jobs in New Hampshire. And when I asked them, what's your biggest challenge? It was workforce. It was finding those STEM-educated uh, workers who can come in and do the jobs, the engineers, the scientists that they need. And so the work that you're doing in that area, both NASA and NSF, is really critical. This is, of course, a point of pride for New Hampshire as well because of the home, we're the home of the Krista McAuliffe and Alan Shepard um, who are both revered granite staters and emblems of STEM education. The same sentiment is shared by our academic institutions that are highly respected around the country for their aerospace research and innovation. And as we were discussing, um, Senator Administrator Nelson, we're immensely proud of the University of New Hampshire Space Science Center, which was recently selected by NASA to research the Earth-Sun environment as one of the two winners of the Heliophysics Medium Class Explorer Competition. The 250 million will improve our understanding of the dynamics of the sun, its connection to the Earth, and the universe. NASA's budget request will land the next humans on the moon and return soil samples from Mars, while NSF seeks to create jobs and maintain U.S. leadership on critical technologies that will define the next several decades. Technologies like artificial intelligence and quantum computing through the new Directorate of Technology, Innovations, and Partnership, and I'm really looking forward to hearing more about that in your testimony. There are also a few challenging items in these requests. In particular, I'm concerned with the proposed cuts to NASA heliophysics and an overall lack of resources to address recent decadal surveys in astrophysics and planetary science at both agencies. So in conclusion, I believe that we must continue to look toward the next frontiers of science and space, and I'm looking forward to the launch of Artemis I this summer. I understand that Senator Moran is also looking forward to that. I support NASA and NSF because these agencies inspire us with curiosity-driven research and exploration, and I think curiosity is one of the most important um, aspects of the human condition. So we thank you both of you, for what you do to answer questions that we want to know about.